So next week we're getting your American Psycho review, are we? Yeah, on the next episode I'll I'll have done American Psycho. Okay, so but before that, Liam. Yeah. I we were tweeting with Gibbo. Yeah. About uh, or I was tweeting from my I was, he he asked something or there was a conversation chain that mentioned Scott Sigler who wrote Nocturnal, which is one of the other books you recommended for me. Yeah, you reviewed it last week. Yes, I did. Yep, good point. Yep. <laughs> so last episode. Yeah. Uh, and then Scott Sigler tweeted at me, Liam. Sorry, why are you trying to encroach on housekeeping, Jack? We're not there yet. Because, Liam, the fact that he tweeted at me yeah. made me want to read more Scott Sigler. So I started reading the Infected trilogy. Okay, right, got you. So I read book one of the Infected trilogy, which is, you know, pretty standardly called Infected. Okay. So it's this... Th- the idea of infected yeah is this new disease starts appearing on people and what it does is it makes them brutally murder the people closest to them okay so i think it starts with someone horribly murdering his family yeah and like you and you follow uh an fbi agent not an fbi agent sorry a cia agent uh someone who works for the cdc and a guy who's just been infected okay and it's the the story of like the government people trying to deal with it so in different ways. Is is it told in a quite a similar way to Nocturnal, where you're like each chapter sort of jumps to a different viewpoint? Yeah, yeah. Because I think yeah, Nocturnal did that, didn't it? Yes, it does. Yeah, yeah, it does. It cool. jumps between and it jumps from one of the like bad guys. That's in air quotes. Yeah, 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 yeah. For the infected. That's right. Yeah. Okay. But like, so it's you're following them as they try and deal with it from both sides, and like the infected guy trying not to murder everyone. Okay. Uh, but like, it was—it's kind of cool. It—it—it it, it does the whole. It does a similar thing to Nocturnal, Nocturnal as well, in that it like doesn't openly start with supernaturally elements or sci-fi elements in this case, but then it does become clear that there is a, a hint of sci-fi, shall we say? Right. Okay. But not in any like overbearing way. Like it isn't ramming it down your throat and being like space, space and aliens. Jack will love this. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 But like. I think you would probably enjoy this book. Okay, well, I have another book of his to read that I haven't got around to yet called Ancestor. Yeah, I'll be reading that at some point as well. Yeah, so I need to read that first. I just, I need to find time to read, Jack. I know, Liam, I know, it's hard. But honestly, this has got some really good graphic scenes. Like, I say good in a weird way, because I know me and you are both fascinated. Like, we both read The Crossed and enjoyed the sort of brutality of it. Yeah. That's probably the wrong way to phrase it. But fuck it. No, it's. I think what's good about Crossed is it's it's a it's a graphic novel that really does kind of push the boundary of taste, and that's yeah, one of the this... like appeals to it. It's a good story as well. Yeah, yeah. But part of the appeal is, is Crossed basically is an excuse for for writers to kind of go, "What's the most fucked up thing I can think of and put in a book?" And it's interesting yeah, yeah. seeing what they come up with. Exactly. This is this is less that it's not like. It's not horrendously outrageous, the stuff that's happening. Yeah. But, like, some of the killing scenes are pretty horrible. Okay. So it's not, you know, totally... You're not reading it being like, oh, my so God, what the hell? Did we say last time that Nocturnal, like, wasn't quite, like, an outright horror? Are we saying this more is? Uh, I don't know. Again, it's... I think... It, it's a weird one, because it's not... Again, I'm, I don't know if I'm a good judge of horror in books, because this book, you know, didn't freak me out or anything but i could see someone being like oh my god the idea of people getting infected and you not knowing and them killing people is pretty horrible and scary so again i think it's got hints of horror but it isn't a full-out horror story got yeah if that makes sense yeah but yeah i gave it 3.5 out of 5 liam okay that's, that's above surprise, average but yeah it's, it's enjoyable yeah it's really good there's you know just a, not any problems with it it's just not as engaging i guess as some things right okay it's on. hard because i love some books so much that my scale has to like shift um i hate it does it though because surely yeah. the books that you really really truly love you're like well that's a five star but i'm also bad at like figuring out what knocks a book down for me so the way i look at it right and i don't know if this is going to help you because we obviously <laughs> rate things slightly differently but i kind of imagine um there being like a a upper and lower end to each scale so i'll be like um for example uh, let's take dunkirk and the big sick right both four out of five but i'm gonna pref- have preferred one to the other so even though it's the same rating it might be like dunkirk for example would be more on the upper end like closer to a 4.5 
whereas the big sick again just as an example uh is on the lower end so more like on the cusp of a, of a four 3.5 sort of thing does that make more sense yeah maybe i don't know this might be a low four i, I think i've been a bit mean with the 3.5 so a four but on the lower end like a four but just yeah yeah that okay. seems more right it's when i actually start talking about it and then you're like the way you've spoken about this the 3.5 doesn't make sense and i'm like no you're right it doesn't yeah why have i done this and i think as well like i'm trying to also be aware that you don't just want to give everything four but sometimes things are a four that's okay it's 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 annoying because like i did that before when i was reading all the stuff that i knew i would like yeah so it made sense like that's why things were getting fours and then now i'm doing stuff you've recommended when i do happen to enjoy it i'm like oh i feel like i shouldn't give this a four right but this is a four, yeah. All right, this is a four. Okay. How Go are you it. finding, like... Because I know you, you, you went through... Fuck, do I know? You went through a huge fantasy phase. Yep. Where it was just that non-stop. That was after my... Yep. I had a little bit of a sci-fi phase as well. Yeah. Was, so how are you finding, like, um, being sort of removed from that for for a little bit? It's, it's fine. I don't mind. Like I've, like I've said, the phases I have, it's, it's like... You watching? Ugh, yeah, I, see, I can't. I get it. fixated. I, I need the variety, so I couldn't go through like a like a, um a horror phase with films where I just watch nothing but horror. I could do like a couple in a row, maybe. Yeah, but books but... are also different in that uh, if you're sitting down for a film, you're sitting down for two hours and you're watching that film, sort of thing, right? Yeah, I find it very difficult to pause a film and walk away and come mm-hmm. back later. I know you do that sometimes. Yeah, but but yeah, it's difficult. Yeah, whereas a book. You have to do it that way. You can't... I know I've done it, like, a couple of times before where I've sat down and just read a book from but, back, yeah. front to start. But front to start? Front to end. Yeah. Front to back is the one. Well done. But, but because I think because I'm doing that, it feels less like, you know, an overload of that one genre. Okay, yeah, got you. And then I find it interesting as well to see the different way that people deal with the genre they're writing for. What do you mean? So, like, you know, you get fantasy. Yeah. And you get so, for example, when I went through my like grim dark phase, right? Yeah. I find it interesting to see how someone early on in the start of grim dark, when people were like, "Oh, if I write a fantasy book but make it brutal and dark, mm. people will read that." Yeah. So they start that movement, and it's interesting to read their like works doing it because they've still got a lot of fantasy elements that you'd like real like you look and be like, "Oh, there are elves in this," and that's very clearly high fantasy, but it's dark. Yeah. Yeah. And then people later on in that movement will have done things that might not have elves in it and might just be humans, but there's magic in the world and sometimes not even magic, but it's fantasy still. And like, I find it interesting to look at the way different people interpret the genre. Yeah, that makes sense. I think that's what it is. So like breaking away from that genre to do these books is still interesting because I I think to me, it's like I'm reading books that someone else has recommended. Yeah. And that's, that's the thread that connects them, if you know what I mean yeah okay so basically what you're saying is people who maybe listen and follow us need to keep recommending you books oh yeah no 100 percent. like i'm gonna read american psycho and gibbo's yeah. already recommended me some other books as well that are on the list okay awesome yeah no i'd be it would be good i think just for my sanity if because <laughs> I, I wouldn't mind if someone recommended like, a couple of fantasy books because they're kind of thrown in with a load of other stuff so for me it's nice just having variety in what i'm listening to when you're reviewing That's these fine. things i understand that liam good 